Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome back to the Assembling of a Fleet series, the series that covers everything from building your very first ship to building and using battlefield tactics to absolutely destroy and crush your enemy. Now, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about building a vehicle repair yard, or a salvage yard, you could even call it, a place where you can take damaged or ships that simply need a little bit of an upgrade to repair, refit, or even construct from scratch. So I'm going to take you around this facility today, show you some of the little bits of tactics that I've been using to assemble ships a lot faster, and show you how to set one up for your own. Now, don't think that these have to be in a station. These could be in a large hangar of a capital ship. So let's actually start on our tour. So first off, we've just got a simple transport ship for transporting a bit of cargo around the base. But now let's head inside to our main supply area. So whenever building any sort of construction in Space Engine, it's very important that you organize your supplies. So if we use this elevator here, and we use it to take us to the next floor, we've actually organized our supplies in quite an interesting method. In this area is the hub, and everything in this area is transported into the smaller hangars as it's requested. But this room is constantly restocked from the ceiling above that items could be dropped down, restored in these containers, and as they are needed, they are requested and then sent out to the smaller hangars. It's also a nice area to store gravity generators as well as a few simple power generators as well. So let's head on down and get over to the really interesting stuff such as our automated repair systems that require a little bit of manual work but they're 100% more fun than actually using the hand welder. So in here we have a small ship that is awaiting repair and we've got quite a backlog of ships to actually cover. And you can see we've got quite a lot of work to do to repair this to get it at least to a level where it's going to be able to get back into the fight. So this is just a small hangar and I'll show you a little bit of the controls before we move on to the much larger hangar where we're going to actually repair a much larger ship. So first off, I'll bring up my hood and we have some basic controls. First off, we have the turntable. So the turntable is used so we can rotate our ship, look at the damage, assess the damage as well as position our actual welder into a position where we can weld the components obviously that end can actually be switched out for a grinder if we're deconstructing so the next actual tool we have is the rotation of the item so we can rotate across as well as welding and we're welding already there i'm not even told it to but we can actually move our arm up and down into different positions as well as rotating our ship so let's rotate our ship and actually weld at the cockpit and you can do some quite precise welding with this sort of system so let's bring our arm back across and let's bring it down into a nice stable position so we can get the cockpit back online in a matter of seconds as well as the whole ship pretty much and a few little adjustments with the actual roundabout is really good. Now you're probably wondering what happens if you have a much larger ship in here or you can't reach a certain component. Well what we can do is actually extend our arm outwards. So let's say that there's a component on the other side of the ship that I can't reach or maybe it's on top and my arm won't actually reach up. So let's actually bring our arm out a little bit and we'll bring it back up so we don't collide with anything, like so. And then we'll just wheel it around so we can actually see it in the whole perspective of the camera. And we can actually push the piston out and retract it back in. Now that is a little bit too fast, but you'll see the speed is a lot slower on the ones up above. And what I can actually tell, it doesn't cause any damage to the small ship. So we'll leave that on repairing why we're doing that. So we've returned back to the main hub where all the supplies are transferred through and we're going to head through this door that is blended in between the containers and we're going to head through this rather dark corridor to the larger repair facility. Now I've got a small gap in the station there because I've been programming some blocks and I wanted to test a few other features out. So as we head through here there's going to be a few more rooms off here and there's going to be some areas for crew relaxation and so on but we're going to head up the staircase towards the large hangar bay. Now, what I've actually done in this room, once we get to the top, is I've tried to organise all the supplies the best as I can. And what I tend to do is I build a ship at this lower level, and then I'll rise it up to the top to actually construct it. So this is the ship that is semi-complete. You've seen it out the other day, and what I've basically done is I've been scratching away a bit, I've been redesigning a little bit of the back, changing the engine bays, and repositioned the actual cockpit itself. So what I'm going to do is bring this up to the next floor and reconstruct it. So what I've also done is 
put all the different parts in different containers so we've got green as like exhaust and engine sort of components where we've got yellow is reactor we have blue as i can't remember what blue does but i know black is like weapons and other components that we're going to stick on the ship so we've got ammunition i believe in there missiles we've got a few pipes as well fusing for the missile bays but pretty much all of them are fed from the central hub building that you can actually see over there you can also see the troop transports on the roof so let's just raise this up to the next level and we'll have a look at the larger ship building area so we'll bring this up to the next level we've got the small lime green and blue ship on board and what you might actually notice here is that I've got a small segregation sort of piece that separates it from the standard sort of blast door lift block. And I'll show you exactly what that's used for when we get to the surface. So we're pretty much entering the hangar bay now. And you might notice that we actually have two cranes up above. So we've got a crane that's controlled on this side and a crane that's controlled on this side. That is so that two people can work on a large ship at once and I found out that's extremely well it just works so well if there's two people working on one ship at the same time so we have a nice little cockpit behind the glass here and you can see we can access it we can do all the same things that we could do with the other smaller one but just on a larger scale so first off we have the lift that is accessible here we can take it up and down and we can also rotate rotate our ship around you can see that there's a bit of twist on that that's because the ship has a special sort of landing gear design but if we twist the actual ship around we can actually repair up some of the sections of it. You can also see that the repair is automatically taking place without us messing around with it too much. So we've got into that position. Now let's actually let this slow down and we'll access one of these rotors. So I've actually got them set in pairs. So three and four act as a pair and five and six. So I can basically place my hands on the actual buttons. So I'm going to put my hands on, for instance, four and five. So four and five should do one axis and five and uh, well, six and seven should do the other so if we go down we've got left and right control and we're gonna go low, lower it down and do the actual cockpit in there and finish off the cockpit so we'll lower that down into position finish that cockpit off we've also got extension on the arm just as the usual setting so we can extend it out and we can shut it off if we want to do one of the more further bit backs because it's going to be harder to reach them panels at the back so the cockpit looks like it's pretty much done so let's actually reverse back the arm and we'll reposition it so we can actually get more of the ship with this next part so lower that down extend the arm with an eight and we should be able to weld up that part of the ship that's at the back there and we can basically just rotate the ship around now on the actual landing pad and we can get some really fast sort of welding results so you can see the landing gear makes it a little bit more uncontrollable this particular ship but a ship with standard sort of landing gears would be much more functional. You can actually see the landing gears there are a little bit funky on this one because they're using pistons rather than the standard actual, just standard landing gear itself. So we're welding that up and we can construct a ship extremely fast at this rate. You can even walk away, be building something else and come back and the actual station itself is still welding and upgrading and repairing your ship. Having a second operator on that crane as well will actually allow you to do it even faster. Now, what we're we missing off this ship, we're missing the two engines. So if we concentrate on doing them next, we should be able to get this ship up and out of here within the next few minutes. So we're going to need to re-rotate the actual platform around so we can see the engine. So let's actually take it back this way. And now let's get our hands in position for some more technical operating. So we'll bring that up, bring that to the right, uh, bring it down again. And now let's bring it a little bit more across. I think that's going to be in line with the engines. And then we'll pop the piston out. And there we go. That's, that'll be about good. Actually, that's getting the engines. There we go. You can see the engines being upgraded back into life. So it's really fun. You can actually build the ship on the lower floor, bring it to this level, and then just weld it up. So that engine's actually being rebuilt as we speak. We've got the landing gears. It's pretty, much, it's pretty much done. You can have a heavy armor ship done with this system really fast. Now, you're probably wondering about supplies getting actual to this arm. Then what you can actually do is you place your supplies up in a box here. I've not really found a better option at the moment except transferring in manually. Just whack a load of plates in there and off it goes. So it looks like that is pretty much done. Let's retract the arm and take this ship for a quick spin. So retract the arm and that'll be an 8, a 9. Arms retracting. 
Very nice. Let's lift that up out of the way. And we'll just leave it over there. So about a five. And there we go. It should be out of the way. Nice and over there. There we go. All folded away. Out of the way. No one's going to ram it. And we'll hop aboard and we'll take this for a little bit of a spin. So we need to access the power generators. Okay, everything seems to be good. Disengage your landing gears. Disengage to get a little bit of lift. Then we'll fold our landing gear away and we'll bring up our rear landing gear. We'll accelerate out. And there we go, we have one ship repaired. You can also use this for a whole variety of things. Just refitting and doing it in this method is so much more fun than actually just being spending a lot of time doing a welder. I'm definitely going to try to implement some sort of system like that in our actual survival. But thank you guys for watching and hopefully it's giving you some interesting ideas on how to build your own sort of repair center. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.